How is it, Grasshopper? Today, what I'd like to talk about is a little um, war story. I'd like to tell you about a little war story. Uh, long ago, um, there was um, a legend uh, called the um, Flying Ashtray. Flying Ashtray is nothing more than a bullet made by the uh, spear. 200 grain, jacketed hollow point. It's a 45 caliber. The reason it had it had name like that was um, it could uh, take a, a cigarette and extinguish it into the hollow point. So this is the uh, current. Um, I do not know the manufacturer of the uh, the company. Uh, the whole the hollow point is not that big. So uh, this is a cigarette. Uh, has about um, 0.3 uh, inch in diameter. As you can see, the hole is not even. I mean, the cigarette is bigger than the uh, hollow point. And um, uh, this is the um, 40 Smith and Wesson. It has a 0 0.4 uh, inch uh, diameter. As you can see, the cigarette goes in there nicely. The main thing that uh, you will see. If you have a flying ashtray um, uh, bullet, it's a huge hole. It's a, a huge hole where you could extinguish the cigarette and has a room to uh, spare. But sadly to say, the flying ashtray bullet is no longer with us. The flying ashtray bullet has evolved into what it called now is uh, uh, gold dot. So a uh, spear 200 grain gold dot is evolution of that flying ashtray bullet. And today's um, the story is that we have flying ashtray junior. It's uh, still with us today. And flying ashtray junior is None other than this one. It is a 38 caliber hollow, hollow, um, 148 grain hollow base watt cutter. And um, I reload these to um, for the uh, competition, the bullseye competition, and we load them all the way to the flush to the case. And the maximum gunpowder that we, uh, I use is a 2.7 to 2.9 grains of a bullseye with one and a half or a small pistol primer. And uh, what we uh, we used to do back then was turn this hollow base watt cutter upside down with the hole facing here and then uh, reload them. And here I'm going to show you the, how big the hole is. And this is the hollow base um, watt cutter bullet. And because um, uh, because of the deep seating, the 158 grain somehow watt cutter, which is about right here, and if you turn upside down, as you can see, it's, it sits a very uh, it's very well deep inside. So um, I do not have any uh, reliable um, reloading data that I can find. However. Um, if you want to load, start with 2.0 grain bullseye. I say again, start with a 2.0 grain. If you experience any hull extraction, it is a definite sign of extreme high pressure. I say again, hull extraction is a sign of an extreme high pressure. So this is my uh, uh, Taurus uh, Model 8, 85, 38. If you load the uh, round and you shoot, and if the uh, case doesn't fall out easily, and that uh, you have to bump it against the table to eject, that is a sign of high pressure, extreme high pressure. 
So stop, don't do it anymore, or you, you will have a chance to blow that uh, firearm. And it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Again, if you want to load and test it, start with a 2.0 bullseye. If you change any other your favorite gun powders, and forget it. There is no uh, reliable uh, reloading source out there uh, to show you what is a uh, starting um, load and then what is the maximum load. All right. So what happened was, um, I mean, we've been doing these um, loading this upside down and shooting the range for a very long time, and then <laughs> somebody sold that idea to Smith and Wesson. <laughs> we were we were doing this for put some giggles at the range, but somebody got smart, shrewd, and sold the idea to the uh, Smith and Wesson. And what the Smith and Wesson did was uh, they coated the lead bullets with a uh, nylon, and then they called it the nightclad. And uh, they uh, uh, squeezed the mouth a little bit so that the uh, I guess to a uh, reliable jump between the uh, the cylinder and the uh, forcing code okay so here is the difference between the two holes this is the original um, flying ashtray junior and here is the um, the night clad and then the, uh, the bullet finally evolved to what is today as um, federal Hydro shock. You could buy these today, and the difference between the um, a night clad and hydro shock is that that is a post in the center, so that the once it hits the um, soft um, target, it will fill in, and the post is supposed to um, evenly distribute outwards, um, creating a, a reliable expansion. And um, again, the bullet technology back then was in infancy, so um, they don't have uh, like a gel. So um, uh, we were uh, reloading the uh, uh, Flying Astray Jr. backwards and just for pops and giggles and we were just um, having fun with it. The bullet has evolved from the uh, Flying Astray Jr. to Smith & Wesson nightclad to federal nightclad and then to finally the uh, hydro shock and again the, uh, sadly to say that the um, uh, flying ashtray the original flying ashtray is now no longer with us however um, the junior is still with us so if you want to uh, test them go ahead again if you blow your gun up it's, I didn't do nothing um, I don't know nothing I hear speak no evil Alright, so that is my um, uh, war story for today and um, I thank you for listening and uh, see you next time.